How to wakeboard. Wakeboarding is extremely fun and it's not as hard as it looks. Check out these tips to help you learn. You will need a ski boat, a wakeboard, a tow line, and balance. Step one, learn the parts of your board, including the toe side edge and the heel side edge, as well as the center fin and the boots. Step two, hold the tow rope in front of you with both hands. Facing the boat, sit and lean back in the water with your elbows around your knees and your feet in the board's boots with the board perpendicular to your body. Step three, allow the boat to slowly accelerate, pulling you up out of the water. As the boat picks up speed, turn the board so the board's nose points toward the boat. Step four, slowly stand up, stabilizing your body by keeping the tow line at your front hip, your body turned slightly to the side and your knees bent. Step five, turn to the right on your toe side by leaning your weight to your toe side edge and letting the board curve out to the right beyond the wake. Step six, lean back onto your heels to dig the heel side edge into the water and turn outside the wake on your left. Move your hands out in front of you. When turning, your weight will pull against the boat more than when you're riding straight. Step seven, get comfortable on the board when turning and riding over the wake. The more comfortable you are in the early stages, the better you'll be able to maneuver when you get better. Did you know? The United States Coast Guard reported that, out of 476 drowning deaths related to boating, 90% of the individuals were not wearing a life jacket. How to body surf. Never swim alone in the ocean. Beware of coral, jellyfish, and unexpected sandbars. Jump into the action this summer by learning how to body surf. You will need good waves to surf. Step one, look for a beach with a gentle slope, which will allow you to wade out into the water for some distance. Beginners should pick a beach with waves that don't get any higher than about four feet. Step two, wade into the water past the breaking waves. Push off the ocean floor and swim toward the shore as the wave approaches you from behind. As it nears, kick to gain speed and raise your body to the surface. Step three, as the wave begins lifting you up, dive so your head and shoulders are lower than your hips and legs. As it continues to lift you, your head and shoulders will come up. Step four, as the wave is breaking, stop kicking and keep your body stiff as a surfboard with your arms in front of you as you ride the wave. Always keep your hands straight out in front of you to protect yourself from spinal injury should the wave send you crashing headfirst into the sand. Step five, after the wave breaks, bring your feet back together and start kicking hard, keeping your head down, your back arched, and your arms in front. Continue swimming toward the shore until you can stand up. Step six, wade back out into the sea. If you look at the next wave and decide you don't want to surf it, turn to the side and drop the shoulder that faces the sea. This will push your body out to the other side of the wave. Did you know? Body surfing burns about 200 calories an hour. How to play beach volleyball. Batting a ball back and forth while you're barefoot on the beach is a fun way to get some exercise. Get started with these basic rules. You will need a beach or beach volleyball court, a volleyball, a volleyball net, at least four players, and a coin. Step one, find a sand court divided by a net. If you're setting up your own court by putting down a net, decide the sideline and endline boundaries. Official beach volleyball courts are 52 feet long by 26 feet wide. Net height depends on the gender of the players. Women's nets are about 7.5 feet and men's nets are about 8 feet high. Step 2. Have between 4 and 12 players and divide into two teams. Step 3. Know the object of the game, which is to send the volleyball over the net. Each team is allowed to hit the ball a maximum of three times before it must sail over the net. The ball can never touch the ground. Smashing the ball down into your opponent's court with the heel of your hand is called a spike. Step 4. Flip a coin to decide who will serve first. Step 5. Know how to score. A point is awarded to the opposing team each time a player lets the ball drop on the ground sends it out of bounds, or fails to return it within three hits. If the team that wins the point served, it also continues to serve. If the winning side didn't serve, they now gain the right to do so. Professional beach volleyball players use hand signals to indicate the type of block they intend to make to thwart their opponents. Step 6. A team wins a set when it scores 21 points with a minimum lead of 2 points. In the case of a 20-20 tie, play continues until a 2-point lead is reached. 
A player who is good at setting up shots for teammates is called a setter. Step 7. The team that wins two sets wins the match. In the case of a 1-1 to -one set tie, the third and deciding set is played to 15 points with a minimum lead of 2 points. Did you know 6'3 beach volleyball champion Gabrielle Reese was already 5 feet tall by the age of 7? How to build a cool sandcastle A beachfront home may be out of your price range, but you can always build yourself a swanky sandcastle. You will need sand, a shovel, a bucket, bottomless circular containers of varying sizes, and sculpting tools. Optional, a spray bottle. Step 1. Pick a good spot. You'll want to be near enough to the ocean that you'll have easy access to water, but not so close that high tide will destroy your masterpiece. The best spot is just above where the dark sand turns lighter. Step 2. Wet an area of sand large enough for the castle you want to build. Pile buckets of sand on it, wet the sand, and tamp it down. Repeat until you have a firm foundation. Keep a spray bottle of water handy so you can keep your sand moist. Wet sand is the key to castle building. Step 3. Start making towers with the help of your bottomless molds. Place the largest in the center of your foundation. Fill it with very wet sand packed down as hard as you can. Place progressively smaller containers on top until you have a satisfactory wedding cake-like structure. Step 4. When all the molds are in place, carefully remove them. Step 5. Build a wall around the castle by stacking little piles of wet sand. Smooth the sides and tops with the bottom of your shovel. Step 6. Take a plastic knife and gently cut into the wall to create a few archways. Use a plastic fork with the middle prongs removed to put the finishing touches on columns. Step 7. Use your sculpting tools to carve out architectural details like staircases, windows, turrets, and doors. Did you know the town of Myrtle Beach built a 43-foot-tall sand castle in 2007 to attract visitors to the seaside resort? How to start a beach volleyball league. One of the most popular summer sports worldwide, beach volleyball is a fun, social, and skill-building activity. You will need participants, a beach, equipment, a committee, a meeting, training, and a tournament. Optional, sponsors, and a budget. Step 1. Define the scope of the club, either high performance or participation and development based, or both. Decide whether you're an independent league or will have affiliations such as an inter-community league. Step 2. Establish an age range and the number of people you need. Recruit friends and acquaintances and then advertise in newspapers, newsletters, or online for players and coaches. Step 3. Contact community beaches and recreation centers to secure a beach facility. Gather balls, ball bags, a first aid kit, and t-shirts or uniforms. Get sponsors. A bar, church, or community league will likely have built-in sponsorship. Sponsors will usually cover the cost of outfitting your club. Step 4. Nominate a president, secretary, and treasurer, and form subcommittees of volunteers to handle issues like fundraising, recruiting, and transportation. Step 5. Elect officials to represent each team and hold a league-wide meeting. Go over team goals and plans and come up with team names. Prepare an annual budget detailing revenues and expenses. Step 6. Train your teams in basic skills and make sure everyone knows the rules and regulations of the game. Organize matches between the teams. Step 7. Have a tournament. Organize a bracket system and play some volleyball. Did you know? First played in the U.S. in the 1920s, beach volleyball was, for the first time, part of the Olympic Games in 1996. How to snorkel. If you want a better look at what's underwater, all you have to do is snorkel. You will need a mask, a snorkel, fins, and a body of water. Optional, toothpaste. Step 1. Find a mask that fits your face and a snorkel. Attach the snorkel by sliding its hook through the strap on the side of the mask. Carry the mask, snorkel, and fins into a shallow part of the water. Step 2. To keep your mask from fogging, rub saliva around its interior and dunk it in the water. Then bring it to your face. Place the straps around your head and pull them until the mask is snug but not tight. Hold your face underwater briefly to ensure the mask doesn't leak. Before using a brand new mask, rub the inside with toothpaste, not gel, and then rinse it with warm water to help prevent it from fogging. Step 3. 
Place the snorkel's mouthpiece in your mouth and breathe through it. Practice putting your face in the water and breathing in and out through your mouth as you rest your teeth lightly on the rubber tabs. Step four, lift your feet out of the water, put on your fins and push off the ground lightly to begin swimming. Kick your legs calmly and evenly to propel you through the water, keeping your fins below the surface and your body parallel to the sea floor. Do not position yourself perpendicularly as you are more likely to step on live coral or stir up sand and debris. Step five, if water enters your snorkel, clear it by exhaling a short burst of air, similar to saying the word two. If that fails, lift your head out of the water, take out the mouthpiece, turn the snorkel upside down to drain it and return it to your mouth. Step six, stay aware of your location, your energy level and other divers as you relax and enjoy peeking in at the mysteries of the deep. Did you know the coral reef tract off the coast of the Florida Keys is home to over 5,500 species of marine life? 